golden base, which isn't true to my color, but it seems to look really neat. So I'm gonna use that today as my all over foundation. And it may sound a little dark, but it's actually not that dark. It does give a slight tan look though. I just want to use that as my base. And one of the reasons why I go a little darker on my main foundation, one, to add a little color because of the black hair, but two, because I have discoloration. And I've already gone in and covered it a little bit with concealer. And all these airbrush companies sell a concealer. You can do it with airbrush um, solely. That's how great the coverage is. But I wanted to use my concealer I love this concealer, I'm gonna show it to you. It is NW25, so it's a different color than my skin tone. It is warmer, and it makes my skin pop because of that, so I play with the different color tones, and this is NW25 by MAC. It is a thicker concealer, so if you're covering discoloration, it really helps, and it blends in really well, and I use a concealer brush. So I love to mix products, and I'm mixing regular makeup with airbrush to get the best of both worlds. So, let's keep going, all right. So now I'm going to add in a lighter color for my contour in the areas I want to pop, and that's my 117 by Dynair, and it's again the Soft Glow Foundation, which is my favorite foundation. And you don't need many drops to do this. Remember this is a daytime look, so it's a little bit lighter than a nighttime. Um, and I always worry that it's too light for camera because you can't really see the effects, so I try to do a daylight picture and I'll post that on my social media so you can see what it looks like in the daylight. So this covers my, cons my discoloration really well and I'm not using a ton of product. It's super lightweight, it doesn't make me break out and I don't feel cakey and heavy. So I'm gonna go into the eyes with the light color, just get rid of some of those darker shadows. And I'm really just playing with light and shadow when I do this. I'm covering the darker parts of the skin from discoloration or lines or what have you with lighter foundations. I'm creating an even palette. Now some people like to work where they do their eyes first and that's totally fine. I've just used to doing my, my skin first and kind of evening out my skin tone just because I've had so many skin problems. And so that's what I do. And then um, I go in and I start with the eyes. And then I'm just cleaning out my gun. I always pull back my lever, use a little Q-tip, run some cleaner through it as I do the colors. You could have two guns on hand, um, and that way you don't have to stop, but for the purposes of this morning, I have one gun, and I'm constantly cleaning it. That's just part of it. Okay. I'm gonna go in and do my eyebrows, which I love to do first. I am using pencil today because of the shape of my brow. I don't wanna do the airbrush. I like using this pencil, I think it gives a very natural, and I only want a little bit to fill in the brow. I'm not looking to do a heavy eyebrow. I've trimmed my eyebrows up, and I'll do a video on that, because I have unique eyebrows. So if you have eyebrows where the shape isn't the traditional shape, and you want to figure out how to shape them, we can talk about that. So as you can see, I'm just doing tiny little strokes, very natural, just filling in any gaps. I don't want a heavy dark brow. Um, this is a dark brunette by L'Oreal. And my eyebrows are naturally black. And if you've watched my other videos, you've seen I'll use different products. Sometimes I use shadow, sometimes I do airbrush, sometimes I use black, sometimes I use a dark brown. I like to mix it up and show you kind of all the different options. And you don't have to look like me to learn from this. It's the technique, it's the ideas of mixing colors and using what's available as well as using different products to accomplish the kind of that look you want. And not feeling like you've got to use all airbrush, you have to use all regular makeup or, you know, it's really about doing what you want to do. So today I'm going to do, let me get the colors out, I'll be right back. All right, so I'm gonna use um, this Cosmic Glow by Tickle Pink Airbrush Makeup. It's a light, soft purple, and it's very sheer. And then I've got a little bit of this gold shimmer that I'm thinking of using, I'm not sure yet. 
And then I've got Queen of the Night, which is a beautiful darker kind of purple, but it's not a harsh purple. So anyway, I'm really focusing on these two colors, the two purples, and I'm going to attempt to do kind of a layer as well as their liner. And maybe we'll pop in some gold if we have time. Um, we'll see. Okay. So let's get started. I'm going to shake these up. And unlike a lot of airbrush uh, makeup, it doesn't have a ball inside, so you're not going to hear that ball, but you are going to have to shake it really well. And their makeup is aloe infused, it is organic, um, so there's a lot of benefits to using this makeup. Okay. And it's very sheer and lightweight. If you have a fairer or a lighter complexion than me, this is going to pop on you a little bit more. They also have something called white, which you can put on and then put the color. Um, and speaking of that, they have a talic powder or a flawless finish powder. And it's basically talic powder, I believe. But anyway, I'm going to take a little of this. And I'm going to just gently tap it. Let's find a brush first. I'm just going to gently tap it on top. I'm going to see if that just helps hold it. Okay, and just very little. And we're going to do a little of this beautiful lavender kind of sheer color. I'm just going to go over the base of the lid with it. I don't know if you can see that. It's a very light purple. It's a little bit whitish on me, but it's sheer. Okay, I'm gonna go a little underneath because I want a, more of a blurred out look. And that's just my style. I don't like to try and make it perfectly lined or perfectly. Today is gonna be a very kind of a loose, casual day look. So, I don't know if you can see that, but it's a very sheer purple. It's really pretty. Now we're gonna go in with the dark. You can never not shake your bottles enough, I think. All right. So this one I am going to use my stencil. The stencil is from Dynair, but you can cut your own stencil, make your own shape. Um, so I'm just going to go in and just kind of control where this, the dark goes, because I don't want the dark to go everywhere. Actually, before I do that, it was recommended that I take the flawless finish and just gently tap. It has no color to it, but I was recommended that I just gently tap if I want to do a later, a second layer or a layer with their product because I was finding that I felt like it wasn't holding and that it felt really dewy. So it was recommended to do that. Just testing out the gun and then I'm going to go in and just shape the darker color and see if that's going to hold a little bit better with the talic. And it could be my skin, I mean, I don't know, but I know that it's not a product you layer a lot, but I do like to create different depths with my shadows, so. Yeah, that turned out really nice. And I'm just kind of putting the darker ones on the edge. I'm not putting too much. I'm gonna go in and just even it a little bit more. And you can drag that across the top to make a liner, and then you're good to go. You don't even have to do a more defined liner. Um, you know, you could just do it like that, put a little a mascara, and that could be a day look. Alright, so, I'm going to clean this up. I'm just going to spray a little air on it, give it a little dry. So I'm just using clean air. Clean air, like dirty air. Alright, so now, so you can see how it created a beautiful... My eyes don't feel wet or shadowy at the moment, so that's good. I'm going to take my liner powder. I've got a black. Sorry, I keep pushing things in the camera. I'm sure you can see them. I'm going to take the sealer. And I'm not sure how you're supposed to use this, if you're supposed to put the shadow on and then put the liner on top. But I'm going to actually do something different. I'm going to mix a little of the sealer to make the brush wet. So I get a finer tip. And then I'm going to go into the powder, just like that. And I'm just going to make the tip of my brush very fine, because sometimes as the brush gets older, 
you'll find that the hairs kind of start to split. And so it's time to get a new brush, but while in the meantime, you gotta use it. So as you can see, it's nice and liquidy. It's just on the tip, and I'm just gonna go on my outer corners. I'm going to start there, and it's already, as you can see, shaping the eye. I'm just tapping in and shaping that, and I'm going to go back into the other eye. And I focus on the corners for my eye because I want to pull them out. I like the kind of winged look. I like the exotic look. I want to make my eyes bigger. Okay, I've got a little fall off underneath. And for this look, I don't want a black line underneath my eye. I want to keep it very clean. I'm just going to take a Q-tip to shape it. I'll shape that one. I'm going to go back in with a little more powder because I see a gap. And you don't have to go that far out. I'm just used to doing a cat eye. Um, and I'm just kind of evening out where I see a gap and smudging it out a little bit. This is a softer look. I don't feel it's a very defined look, but this is probably more defined than most people do for an everyday. And this is an everyday look. Once again, I'm doing another get ready with me and it's early in the morning and I wanna show you how you can add a little glam to your day, make it quick and easy and fun and just take time to celebrate you. So okay, so as you can see, it went on really well. I Everything's lightweight smooth. I'm just going to go over top with a little liner. Now I'm going to put the eyelashes on and I'm going to see how it reacts, the glue, with this throughout my day. Okay. Duo, my favorite glue. Doesn't hurt the eyes, dries clear. Pull out my eyelash kit and I'm going to do a very natural lash today. Um, I reuse my lashes until they're ratty. I pull the glue off them if there's any residue. I mean, that's just life. You, you know, lashes add up and they get expensive. And for the everyday person, you know, it's an extra and not everybody does their lashes. So I want to show you how you can and kind of save a little money and make it easy. So I've probably worn these about five times now. And a lot of people don't tell you that. You can reuse your strip lashes. You just gotta take care of them. And I took the glue off and any makeup. And you can usually cover anything with a little liner. You just wanna keep them clean and not clumpy. And for those of you with eyelash extensions, um, you've got it even easier. So, super lightweight. I'm thinking about trying that. So if anybody has tips or somebody really good in the Washington area, let me know. I, f I got a referral to someone, and so I'm going to make an appointment with them, and I might try it. I'll let you know how it goes. All right, so this is a very lightweight lash. I've gone in and just put the glue in on the, the edges very lightly, and I'm going to go in. And I try to get it closer to my inner corner, um, but the beauty is if you don't know anything about applying lashes. If you've already made the black line, then you don't have to worry as much about placement because it fills it in. And if you are a very professional eyelash person and you do this all the time, you will already know that. So once again, I'm going to take my clean lash. It may have just a little bit of older glue, but nothing clumpy. They're super natural looking lashes. I use these in my photo shoots all the time on ladies because it's lightweight and natural and you can build these. You can add mascara or you can do a, a double stack lash. And then you just pop them in, press. I usually start with the middle. Okay. Got a little fall off underneath. I can take the clean side of my Q-tip and just Grab any glue. Okay, so I'm going to give those a second to dry. I'm just going to use a little dry air from the airbrush. That's another thing the airbrush is great for. 
I'm just gonna dry this. All right, it's always harder to put the lashes on when I've got a mirror so far away. I have my small mirror here and that actually makes it easier, but I want you to be able to see it. So I'll let that dry. I don't love this little thick line, so I'm gonna go in with the darker shadow and use it like a liner and just kind of blend this chunky little line out with the airbrush. You only need like a drop to do this. So I'm basically taking my stencil and I'm just blending in the ends so that little line doesn't stand out so much. I hate it. All right, I'm just gonna do one more drop. And this is where I have to be careful because I find with this product, I can't make it too heavy. There we go. I'm also kind of shaping in, which I didn't do earlier to kind of create that darker kind of edge. All right, hopefully you can see that. It's looking quite nice. So I'm gonna clean out my, the rest of the product from my gun. And I'm gonna take the, the clean, dry air. As you can see, there's no product in here. And I'm just gonna spray gently over top to help dry it. And you wanna be careful not to spray into your eye, but it can kinda of help with the layers. All right, and I'm gonna take, once again, just a touch of the clear metallic powder. I'm taking a, a very tiny brush, just one of these round, soft ones. I'm very gently tapping. I'm just gonna tap over top, and I can see I already have some fall off, so I'm gonna go like that, you can see it. And that stops any, like if you tear, it's gonna help grab that. If the makeup feels wet and you're in a hurry, this is a really great way, because it's not coloring over the color, it's just basically pressing it in so you have no fall off and it helps last throughout the day, okay? And there's nothing wrong with that. Every product's different, and I wanna see how long this lasts today. So far, I love the way it looks. So, I've got this yellow, and I'm curious. I wanna just add a pop in the center to add some color, bring in some brightness, see what this looks like. I may wreck my eye, or it may look amazing. So I'm just gonna go in And I've done maybe two, three pumps right in the center. Once again, it's another sheer, beautiful yellow gold shimmer by Tickle Pink Airbrush. I'm gonna clean the gun out. And I wanted to just add a little brightness, so I added that shimmer right in the center of the eyelid. I'm just cleaned out my gun, and now I'm just doing a light airbrush to make sure everything's dry, so I don't have to wait. And, right. At the very end, I'm gonna go in and freshen up the liner just to, in case the eyelash has gone a little higher or lower and just evens it out. But right now, we'll do the rest of the product. I've got a little of this gold, and I think I am gonna apply it. Come, you purchase the, what's it called? Glix Fix, and this helps adhere it. And I tried it before in another video, and like I said, I felt like it was too fast. So this stuff is really gorgeous. I feel like it's lightweight. It doesn't feel sticky and clumpy like some glitter adhesives, so. Now, this you do apply with a brush. You don't put it in your gun. You can get product where it's very shimmery, but this, for purposes of the glitter, is a different look, I feel, than when you do airbrush glitter. So I am just gonna go in with another tiny brush. I think I'm gonna take this little round one. Ooh, let's clean it up a little. Okay, it's just a small round tip because I want to carefully just tap it in the center. It's a day look, I don't want a ton. For the purpose of the video, I wanted to show you the glitter and I also want to show how you can add a little something to your day so without looking over the top, if that's not your world and you know. So I've put the clear glitter on my palette and I'm mixing that in first and then I'm gonna just tap in. And I'm hoping that when I do it that way, it creates a little mixture so that there's no fall off all over your face. And that's another thing, glitter falls off if you're not careful and then the next thing you know you have glitter everywhere and that's not what I want for my everyday. So I'm just going in there mixing the glitter with a little brush and then I'm just gonna tap in the center. Very lightly. 
I just want to add a little light and you want to bring the light into the center of the eye without doing a heavy glittered look for your everyday. And it's just a touch. So nothing too crazy, but enough to add some fun to your day look. All right. All right, so I am going to go in and touch up with my liner just in the center. Once again, I'm using that tiny little angled brush. It is a MAC brush, a 266, um, which I love. So hang on, I'll be right back. Okay, so I don't know if I just filmed all that, but I finished the look. I used the waterproof sealer to seal it over top my real and airbrush makeup. I'm trying to show you the benefits of mixing products, getting the best of both worlds, as well as this gorgeous line by Tickle Pink Airbrush. I use their flawless finish, um, some of their beautiful purples, their gold shimmer, and this gorgeous glitter. And you can use this with regular makeup or airbrush, it works really well. And then I'm testing out their black liner with my lashes, um, the duo glue to make sure I get no irritation. So I'll let you know how that goes. And I've used um, the Glix Fix, Glix Fix for the uh, glitter, just a little pop in the center, and then the liner sealer, the final end to seal it. So I hope you like this look. I'm going to finish it off and I'll show you a picture. Finish it off by doing my hair. Anyway, so um, for the purposes of making this video shorter, you guys have a great day and I will see you again.